Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to write trigonometric fun functions. We're going to focus on how do we look at the graph of a trig function, a sine or a cosine function, identify whether it is easiest to write that function in terms of sine or cosine, determine what the amplitude is, what the center is, and how do we use all that information to write the function from the graph. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so our goal in this lesson is to write sine and cosine functions given a graph. There's actually a special name for sine or cosine functions, and it's called a sinusoid. Now, even though this particular vocab word has the word sine in it, know that a sinusoid is used to, to describe the graph of both a sine and a cosine function. So we can write sine or cosine functions that model a sinusoid by finding the values that we need to plug it into the basic form of the function. And I'm actually going to just reference this form is a form that some textbooks use because the H and the K aspect, and I guess the A aspect, tie back to what we learned in previous chapters with different types of functions. H and K referencing our translations left, right, up, down. A representing our vertical stretches and shrinks. B representing our horizontal stretches and shrinks. Now, our textbook and what we have grown more accustomed to looking at has this CD in the space where we have H and K. And this is really common to have different textbooks and different sources reference something in a different way. So we're going to kind of go back and forth between the two. But key things I want to point out is that the absolute value of A is our amplitude. We know this already, that our period is 2 pi divided by B, that our center is going to be y equals k or y equals d, which we have been using in previous lessons. And we're going to specifically focus in this class on what happens when h is equal to 0. So really, we're going to be looking at y equals a times sine of bx plus d or plus k, whichever way you want to think about it. So we're going to be looking to identify, in order to write these functions, what are a, b, and d so that we can write the function. In future classes, you will focus on h being other values where it has shifted left and right. But for the purposes of this class, really laying the foundation, we're going to focus on h being 0. So how do we identify these three parts? How do we identify whether or not it's sine or cosine so that we can write a function from a graph? The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to start with the center k or y equals d. Usually it's easy to identify from a graph where that center line is. If you can't identify it from a graph, what you can do is take the minimum value and the maximum value and find their average because the center should be halfway between them. So if the maximum value is 2 and the minimum value is 0, 2 plus 0 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. So you can use this formula as needed to find the value of the center. You also may just be able to identify the value of the center from the graph. For example, on this graph in example A, I can tell that the center is this dotted line here, which happens to be at y equals 1. So the first thing we're going to do is identify our center. So we just identified that d or k is equal to 1. Then we're going to identify the amplitude. Once we have our center line, we can identify how high above or how low below the center line we are going. That length is our amplitude. So in this case, it's going up and down one half. For example, A. So our amplitude is going to be one half. Third, we're going to find the period from the graph and set it equal to what we know the period is equal to. The period is equal to 2 pi over B. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what is a full phase. So starting at 0, because we know we're not going to have any horizontal translations in these examples, when does it get back around to this same spot? So that's happening from here to here. This is also going to help you identify step 4, where we're asking, is this a sine or a cosine graph? But we're going to come back to that in just a minute. So we're starting at 0, and we make a full cycle at pi. So what we can say is that the period is pi, and we know that to find the period, we do 2 pi divided by b. 
So to solve here, we just need to solve for b. So b times pi equals 2 pi. So b is going to equal 2. So we have d, b, and a. The only thing we have left to figure out is whether we have a sine or cosine graph and to check whether or not we have a reflection happening. So to decide whether the graph is sine or cosine model, thinking or acknowledging that we're not going to have a horizontal shift, we need to look at the shape that we sort of have boxed in within our period. Does this shape look like sort of an sideways S sine graph or does it look more like a U or an upside down U for the cosine graph? So the shape that we have trapped in between our period looks more like a U graph. So this is telling me this is a cosine graph. And last but not least, we need to check for any reflections. This doesn't look like it has any reflections. It starts up, goes down, and then ends back at the maximum. That's what cosine does. So we can now put these pieces together to write our function for a. So I'm going to say f of x equals a, which is 1 half, times cosine of bx. And we said that b was 2 plus d or plus k, which is going to be plus 1. So here we have our sinusoid function. So let's look at example b together. The first thing we want to do is identify that center line, which looks like we're looking right here. And what is that line? That line is y equals negative 1, which means whether you're saying k or you're saying d, you can write it either way. That center is going to be negative 1. Now, from the center, we can identify the amplitude. What is this length or what is this length? That's going to give us our A value, which is length 1. Now, let's identify a period. Knowing that we're having no horizontal translations, we're looking to start here and end here, full cycle. This looks like sine to me, which I'm going to just make a note here because it's making that sideways s. And what is that period? It's going from 0 to 2 pi. So the period is 2 pi. 2 pi equals 2 pi divided by b, which means that b is just 1. Are there any reflections? So normally, sine starts and goes up and then down and then back around. Here, sine is not going up. It's going down. So there is also a reflection happening. A reflection across the negative or across the x-axis means that a is actually going to be a negative number. So let's put all this information together. Our function, I'm going to put a negative here for the reflection. The amplitude we found was 1. Our function we said was sine of x. B is 1. And y is negative 1. And then I'm going to just simplify this. It kind of seems silly to have all these negatives here or have all these ones written. Here is our simplified version of that function. So key things here, identify the center. That's your K or your D value. Use the center to identify the amplitude. Mark on your graph to figure out where the period is. That will also help you determine whether you're looking at a sine or a cosine graph. You can use the period to solve for B. The period is going to equal 2 pi over B. Then make your decision, is it easier to represent this graph as sine or cosine? And lastly, check that you don't have a reflection. And if you do, modify that by just putting a negative in front of the function. Let's go ahead and look at a couple more examples. All right, looking at number one here, the very first thing I want to do is identify the center. And it looks like the center is the x-axis. But let's just make sure that this is the center. And I can tell because I should be able to go up and down the same distance to get my amplitude, and that does make sense. Up, I'm going two, down, I'm going negative two. <clears throat> so we actually just identified that k or d, whichever variable you wanna use, is zero, and that my amplitude is two. Now, whether or not it's negative two, I'm gonna determine with the reflection. Now I wanna look for my period. If I start at zero and I trace this function, it looks like I'm getting back through one period here which also means I'm looking at a sine graph because it's making that sort of sideways S look. Here is zero. At this point, we have cycled through one period, but we can't necessarily tell from the graph what that point is. So actually, I'm going to erase some of this 
other markings so it's a little easier to see the graph. So remember we make five points to form each of our graphs so we can see all five points there. So let's use that to help us figure out what the x value of this endpoint is. So we're starting at zero. The first point is at pi over six. This next point would be at two pi over six or pi over three. That makes this point three pi over six, which simplifies to pi over two, which would make this one four pi over six. So the period for this particular graph is four pi over six, which I'm gonna just go ahead and simplify that. 4 pi over 6 is going to simplify to be 2 pi over 3. This is going to be equal to 2 pi over b, and b is the part of the function that I need if I'm going to write out my function like this. So what is b going to be? Well, the 2 pi's are the same on both sides, so b must be 3. So I have now identified my center, or d, to be 0, we figured out that it's sine. We just figured out that B is going to be 3. The amplitude, which is the absolute value of A, is 2. So the only other thing I need to check is to see whether or not A is positive 2 or negative 2, whether or not there is a reflection with my graph. So normal sine starts at the center and goes up. This sine is starting at the center and going up. So there is no reflection. So let's go ahead and write our function. You can either write it as f of x, you could write it as y. So f of x is gonna equal our amplitude two times sine of b three x plus our center. Now I know it's kind of silly to write plus zero here, but I just want you to see that's where each of those pieces is going. So we could simplify this y equals sine two sine of three x. Let's go ahead and look at number two. So just like when we were graphing in the previous video, the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna identify our center. In this case, that center is y equals zero. Then we're gonna determine our amplitude from the center. We are going up one half or up 0.5 or down 0.5. So the absolute value of A is gonna be one half. So the absolute value of A is gonna be one half we know that D is the center, which is zero. Now we need to figure out what the period is. So since we know we're not dealing with horizontal translations, we can always start on the x-axis. Let's go ahead and, and graph the five key points or identify them from this graph. So here's our first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one. That's gonna help us identify the period from the first to the fifth point, how far are we going? Well, we're going from zero to two, so the period is gonna be two. So if the period is two, that means that two is equal to two pi over b. If we multiply both sides by b, we're gonna get that two b is equal to two pi. So that must mean that b is pi. Now we need to decide if we're looking at a sine graph or a cosine graph. And then we need to decide whether or not there is a reflection. So looking at this graph, looking at those specific five points that we just pointed out, I'm going to try and make this darker so you can see it. This graph here, is that the shape that we typically see for sine or for cosine? So thinking about this shape, this looks more like cosine than it does sine. Normal cosine starts at the highest point, curves down, to the minimum and then curves back up to the highest point. So this doesn't look exactly like a normal cosine graph. It looks like the reflection of one. So I'm gonna make that note, we have a reflection. So our function y or f of x is gonna equal, our amplitude is gonna be negative. This is dealing with that reflection. What function are we talking about here? Cosine of b times x plus our d value. Or simplified and in function notation, f of x equals negative one half cosine of pi x. All right, I want you to go ahead and 
Look at numbers three and four and see if you can just do the first two pieces. Can you identify the center, which will tell you your D value, and can you identify the amplitude? Then unpause the video and see how you did. So hopefully you had time to identify the center. On number three, that center is Y equals three. That means the D value for our function is gonna be three or the K value if you wanna think about it in that other form. Our amplitude is gonna be the distance from the center to the highest value. So if the center is at three and it goes up to five, that means the absolute value of A or our amplitude is gonna be equal to two. On number four, the center is zero. Our amplitude or the absolute value of A, it's going from zero up to three is gonna be three. So now I know A, well actually I know the absolute value of A and I know D. We need to figure out what the period is. So starting on number three, I want you to start at the X axis and trace or plot or darken those five key points so that you can see where the period is and you can decide if this is gonna be a sine or cosine graph. So go ahead and pause the video and darken those four points, those four other points. All right, so here we go. So we're starting at zero, and the next time we get to that same spot, or our fifth point will land us on what looks like four. So the period is four, and four is equal to two pi over b, which means four b is two pi, which means that b is gonna be two pi over two, sorry, two pi over four, which is gonna simplify to be pi over two. Now, looking at the curve that we just identified with those first five points, does this look like a sine graph or a cosine graph? Well, cosine makes that U shape, so this looks like a sine shape. So I'm going to ask myself the question, is it reflected or not? We have found all the other information we need. Sine usually starts at the center and goes up. Then it comes back down. Here, we're starting at the center and we're going down, so it must be reflected. That means that our A value is actually going to be negative. So we can write F of X or Y equals negative two times sine of BX, and in this case, B is pi over two, so pi over two times X plus the center, which is three. All right, I'm gonna encourage you to pause the video and finish number four all on your own and then unpause the video and see how you did. All right, so I'm gonna identify those five points. I'm gonna darken them on my graph to help me identify the period. So I'm starting at zero and I'm ending at two pi. That means the period is gonna be two pi, which is equal to two pi over B. So in this case, B is just gonna be equal to one. Now I wanna see is this the shape of a sine graph or a cosine graph? So looking at this shape here, just trying to make it darker so it stands out, that looks like a cosine graph. It's making more of a U shape than it is an S sideways S shape. It's a cosine graph that starts and ends at the maximum values, which means there is no reflection. That's how cosine usually looks. So let's go ahead and write our function. Y equals or F of X equals A, which we decided is three times cosine of one X. You don't need a one here, but I like for you to just see where each piece is coming into play. Plus our D value, which in this case is just plus zero. So we could write this a little nicer and just say three times cosine of X. So key ideas in this lesson, we identified how to write the equation of sine or cosine given a graph, specifically in the case where we're not looking at a horizontal shift left or right. We talked about identifying where the center is so that you could find the amplitude. And then after you find the center and the amplitude, which leads you to your D value and the absolute value of your A value, plotting those five points so that you can tell where the period is and use the fact that the period is equal to two pi over B to solve for B then use those five points to trace and decide if we're looking at a sine or a cosine graph and check to see whether or not there is a reflection. So go ahead and write down any questions you have and I look forward to supporting you on this. Thanks for listening.